This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories. Many families who lost their homes in the flooding three weeks ago have now had hotel vouchers extended. That's coming as a huge relief as many vouchers were set to expire yesterday. But for many, it's only a temporary feeling. Some flood victims tell us they don't know what they'll do when their current extension also runs out. Lisa Sheffield and her family of seven have been living in a hotel since floodwaters destroyed their Spring Valley home. She says she spent $2,000 of her own money to put her family in a hotel for a week. I'm maxed out on my credit cards. My savings are gone um, and I don't know how I'm going to repair my house. We just forgot. That's the hard part. We just feel forgotten. Sheffield and her family have now had their hotel voucher extended for another week, but county leaders say they hear the frustration and are stepping in to help. A spokesperson says they're working with local organizations to help extend more vouchers until they can access housing through the county. As of Sunday, the city helped place almost 500 adults, 238 children and 187 pets in local hotels. More affordable housing is soon coming to the North County. Leaders broke ground today on a 100 unit complex at the Rancho Bernardo Transit Station. This development is called Skyline. The seven story structure will house a mix of units from one to three bedrooms, all reserved for families and individuals making 30 to 60% less than the area median income which was about 115,000 last year. The project manager says they are also going to provide partially subsidized bus passes for residents for a few months of the year for a few years. This project up in RB will be complete at the beginning of 2026. The first citywide labor agreement is now in effect here in San Diego. Mayor Todd Gloria signed it into law yesterday morning. It will make sure skilled local workers are hired for city construction projects. The agreement will also ensure city projects get done on time and on budget and meet high standards for worker health and safety. The city council gave its final approval of the ordinance on Tuesday, reversing a 10 year old ban on project labor agreements for city construction projects. A little paint, a little color, it is amazing what it can do to bring alive your senses. And that is the point of a new mural that was unveiled in Rolando this midday as part of SDG&E's beautification program. NBC7's Nicole Gomez checks it out. Well, the goal of this mural just up the block here is to give the neighborhood something nice to look at when they're walking or driving down the street. You see it all the time with those electrical boxes covered in artwork. Well, now you can add a substation to the list. The colorful mural is located near 62nd and Stanley at the Rolando SDG&E substation. It was designed by local artist Katie Yaw in partnership with the Art Reach Mural Program. The artwork depicts a path weaving through local wildlife, native plants, and the hillside neighborhoods surrounding San Diego State. When coming up with the design, SDG&E knew it was very important to consult the surrounding neighborhood. Well, if a mural is going to be out in the community, we need to have feedback from the community. So ArtReach and SDG need, uh, reached out to the neighborhood and said, look, we need some feedback on how you want the artwork to look in, in your area. And so they sent online comments. We had forums. Uh, they were able to give the feedback and the artist was able to translate that material into the art that we see back here. Well, SDG&E says in the past five years, they've completed about a dozen of these projects in their service area and hope to do more. Reporting from Rolando, Nicole Gomez, NBC7. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen joins us now with a look at the forecast. Hi, Sheena. Hey, Monica, as we head through the afternoon, we're going to have seasonable high temperatures for this time of the year. Mid to upper 60s inland and sunny, about the upper mid 60s mostly at the coast. There are low 60s at the beaches. And if you're along the coast, you may notice just some very thin clouds hanging around, but overall a nice day. Mountains will be sunny around 57. Deserts low 70s and sunny. As we head into the next four days, we'll start to notice some changes, but so far the weekend does look mostly dry. We'll be seeing more clouds around this week and rain chances hold off until Monday, and we could see a few sprinkles maybe on Sunday. Sunday. Your 10 day forecast is coming up. Thank you. So many questions remain after heavy flooding led to so much destruction across San Diego communities. Why neighbors believe the city didn't do enough to prevent this tragedy and San Diego County working to cut a majority of its greenhouse gas emissions in the next 20 years. How they're focusing on farming coming up. Stay with us. 
NBC7 and Telemundo 20 deliver coverage you count on. We have live team coverage for you. Reporters spread out all over the county. As more rain and flooding threatens, the first alert weather team got you prepared. By the time you wake up in the morning, things are likely going to look a lot different. Kept you up to date. This is all part of our big winter storm. Look at all the rain around the county now. And stayed with you on air, on our app, and streaming. The National Weather Service did issue that flood warning. NBC7 and Telemundo 20. Coverage you count on. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. More than three weeks later, and there are still a lot of questions about why the flooding was so devastating in parts of San Diego. In the immediate days after the rain, city leaders pointed to the severity of the storm, but neighbors believe flood channels needed to be better maintained. We learned that San Diego only has a team of 15 people responsible of doing that job. Some of the worst flooding happened in Southcrest. The city's stormwater department director told us the channel that runs through there was was due to be cleared out. I called a couple of months ago to see if they would just clean out all the mattresses and just trash and stuff. Even if we would have maintained the alpha channel prior to January 22nd, it's still only designed to handle a 10-year storm. And what we saw with those intense rain events on January 22nd were well beyond a 10-year storm. The Alpha Channel was scheduled to be cleared out this month or next month. San Diego County is mapping out a plan to meet the state's goal of cutting greenhouse gas emissions by 85% by the year 2045. Part of that plan involves transportation, water, energy, and farming. We visited the farm at Hakuma Produce in Ramona, which has started using sustainable practices, including adding compost to its soil. It helps soil store carbon and retain water so farmers don't have to irrigate as much. They say changes like this not only help the planet, but the harvest too. When you do a practice like applying compost onto your farm to help you know, give nutrients and support to your plants, that also has the ability to you know, further pull the carbon down and store it in the soil. How about four acres of land being farmed in the right way in terms of putting carbon back to the earth? That is, can be a small farm, but that is a huge impact. The county's climate action plan will go to the board of supervisors by the end of the year. A powerful blast injured at least seven LA firefighters when a compressed natural gas tank on a truck exploded. See the aftermath there. It was in Wilmington, about 20 miles south of downtown Los Angeles. Two firefighters are in critical condition and others are being evaluated according to officials and 150 firefighters still on the scene to handle the hazardous materials and make sure that the public stays safe. Flames shot as high as telephone poles. Details were not available as to what brought firefighters to the scene initially. Right now to our north, parts of the Pacific Coast Highway from Malibu to Ventura are closed in both directions. You can imagine, yes, it's because of erosion from high tides and all the heavy rain we've had. All lanes are expected to be closed every night until further notice. NBC7's Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20's Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen bringing you the first alert of a tornado warning. If you're just tuning in, this is a tornado warning. This is for this area that you're seeing on the map. Constantly updating you. If you're in this area, make sure you seek shelter, interior hallway or closet. And staying with you until the potential for danger passed. We no longer have the tornado warning that was for East County. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen and the first alert weather team. Coverage you count on. Hi there, I'm NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen. For today at the coast, we'll be in the mid-60s. In La Valley's upper 60s, mostly sunny. Mountains will be in the 50s. As we head into tonight, more clouds move through early tomorrow morning. It'll still be chilly, but not as cold as we were a few mornings ago. This weekend actually looks better. The rain chances have moved off into next week, kind of slowing down a little bit, but we could have a few sprinkles on Sunday. So you'll notice more clouds this weekend. Early next week, there's our rain chance Monday through Wednesday, and it looks like mostly rain in the mountains. Thank you. If you've been to the beach in the last couple of nights, you might have noticed the bioluminescence is back. A viewer sent us this video showing electric blue waves at Torrey Pines and Carlsbad. Noah says the light comes from living organisms. When they're moved by waves, that light becomes visible. We have more coverage account on at NBC7.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.